Hey, what's up? It's Schnell, and it's round four. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. It's my third camera, and yeah. Thanks to Gurgling Gore, we get to go over one of the sickest splits so far of the year, and that's Documentaries of Necrophagia, The Mighty Putrid Stew, and Cyst Gurgle with a nice, easy-to-read logo. It honestly is. I'm not even being sarcastic. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, I cursed in under a minute. I hate you, YouTube. But I love just mincing, nasty, gore-riddled drums with a nice ping. And this is just chock full of brutality, disgustingness, fun songs, hyper-blasting fucking noisy madness, and fucking awesome tunes from each band. 14 tracks of just mincing, gore-riddled madness. And look at how nut, Dude, these shells are so fucking nice. And I like how, for those of you that have families and shit, and for example, just because it's extremely gnarly, let's say you don't want your little two-year-old nephew to find your copy of Disgorge Forensic. Well, Gurgling Gore thought ahead and made a nice censored cover that, you know, like the font even pops a little bit. Very gorgeous cosmetics. Even the parental advisory lets you know that within is some gross anatomy as anatomy is destiny but these 14 tracks are just fucking gnarly i horn and putrid stew on the putrid stew side of things oh my goodness and then we have gore dick <laughs> oh my god so gore dick from cyst gurgle might have my new favorite name when it comes to band uh, personnel names. Dr. Sarai and uh, Noise. I just, I think that's N-I-O-S-E. Face and Vomit Flux. This girl's fucking awesome. And so is Putrid Stew. Like, their last, that one split they did with, uh, Fluids was the last I heard, but like this is from what I've heard from Future Stew, this is their best material I've heard so far. I I fucking I wish I honestly wish this was like a ten inch or something like it's good enough to be one. It's fucking great, honestly. <laughs> like these two splits right here. Like, the Lymphatic Phlegm Flesh Grinder split. And this split with Putrid Stew and Cyst Gurgle. Yo, again, alongside Muicus. Where'd my Muicus tape go? Ah, no. Oh, there it is. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to talk shit, but, like, Gurgling Gore has a gnarly roster. But then there's, like, certain bands, like, Maul. And just trust me, like, there's some really sick shit Gurgling Gore has, especially in their distro. But band-wise, I, I know um, Maul is on, like, 20 bucks spin and stuff now. It's just, I kind of feel like that's there. And I mean, no offense, but I feel like it's there to fill up some vacant space from where 
Scorched was and while people wait for a new Tomb Mold record. Uh, um, that's just how I see it. And, you know, it's a good choice. I do like their vocalist. His vocals are sick, but, you know, I feel bad for, like, Scorched. Like, yeah, some shitty stuff happened. They pretty much got canceled, but then fired those individuals, got a new lineup, guessing they got dropped from 20 bucks spin because they're looking for a new label to do the new full length. I'm guessing Redefining Darkness. I'm just going to guess that. Because somebody said Dark Descent, and I was like, no. Like, they were already kind of in bed with Dark Descent through Unspeakable Acts. They did the first Scorched record, Unspeakable Acts, and Dark Descent was supposed to do the vinyl. I even have a postcard still. But it never happened. And then... 20 Bucks Spin ended up putting out the demo compil compilation and then the second full length and then all that bad shit happened. Those guys are also like married. They have real jobs. It's the same with Outer Heaven. It's one of the reasons I get, I don't get bummed because it's not my band, but when I like a band like Outer Heaven that's been busting their asses for years now. Just kind of like for all these like ex maggot stomp bands to just like literally like you know bands that have been around for like over a decade just like eh you know whatever like just put Frozen Soul above like Outer Heaven and again I mean zero offense but I just find it extremely Strange that a band that's like busted their ass like Scorched has, like I feel like a lot of people just don't care or and like same with Outer Heaven, like when they put out a release or announce a show, it's like fuck yeah, but like those guys have families, they can't just do like a forty eight day tour anymore. Like I'm sure they could, but like you know. You're going to start seeing a lot of your favorite bands kind of start slowing down on touring. And that's fine. I have no problem with seeing one of my favorite bands like twice a year. I don't need to see them five times in a month. As much as I used to love that. But like... <laughs> Outer Heaven, for example, though, I really feel is like a band that should have been here but just i don't know like they did that tour with outer heaven i mean they, outer heaven did that tour with full of hell like right after realms came out and then the pandemic happened a couple years after actually like so i don't know maybe they will have a tour coming up and like headline because I'm sorry, like, I really, I, good for Undeath and, like, all those bands, but, like, I'm sorry, you, I don't think, like, you shouldn't be headlining above, like, certain bands. I don't know, I've seen some weird shit show-wise, like, when it comes to the order in which bands are playing. Like, I, that band Revocation? Playing over Atheist. What? Like, who the fuck made that decision? To me, that's just disrespectful. Like, I would be like, oh, no. Like, you're headlining. All right? Like, uh, no. I'm not going on after Atheist. Like, dude, go ahead. You guys can headline. Shit like that just boggles my fucking mind sometimes when I think about it. But Gurgling Gore, on the other hand, right now, like, it seems like a lot of the more trendy releases are kind of, like I said a while back, they will go into the background. 
while releases like this will stay strong for decades to come. Like, so far, with Gurgling Gore, like, this is one of my favorite releases of theirs, and I legitimately have never heard a single other person talk about it. And that's Shapeless Being. No one. Like, I'm dead serious. Not one fucking friend of mine has ever been like, yo, that Shapeless Being is fucking sick. Not once. And then I remember just getting blown up. Like, yo, when you going over to New Wharf Lurch? Like, I, I don't really like, you know, like, not really my thing. Like, and then, yeah, it's just whatever. Like, dude, you gonna go over Bonginator? Like, nah, I'm not. Sorry. I mean, if you want me to, I'll do it. But I'm not buying it. That's the only thing. Like, I'm sorry. I just, that's just not my cup of tea. Like, uh, aliens, bongs, just the, that whole gimmick. Like, it's just not, like, no. Eh, like, there's only a few people that are allowed to have mullets. Pro wrestlers and pro wrestlers. Or if you just live in Florida, maybe. Maybe that dude lives in Florida. I don't fucking know. And I just have to quote a comment because it just... I kind of felt bad, but then at the same time, I was like, that's a weird, I would, I would never say that to it, to someone. I wish you liked my band. Like, I legit felt like, is this dude, like, busting balls, or, like, does he really wish I, like, liked his band? Because I mean, no offense, I understand how hard it is to make tunes. I just, I'm not a fan of the gimmick. And, like, yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm sorry. I'm picky when it comes to that shit. And to Big DG, he, that logo is so fucking good. I, I, every time I, I you use this logo, I fucking just get stoked. I'm like, yo, yes. I love that Gurgling Gore logo. It's just, like, dialed. It reminds me of, like, the skinless logo, but, like, it's just on the fucking money exactly what it needs to be, especially for a release like this that's just completely drenched in gore. Documentaries of Necrophagia is a fucking A-plus of mincing gore grind madness. And again, with Gurgling Gore, like I said, sometimes they put out, you know, releases that I understand. It's like, all right, kids are going to eat this up. Like, I kind of wish I would have got that Fulci box set. I really like Fulci, and I only have this release. And it's not a Gurgling Gore one either. It's a Time to Kill. Um, exhumed information, but it's, uh, it has the TV crimes, yeah, Time to Kill record. And, uh, the B-side has, like, the synth shit. It, it's real, I really like this release. Yeah, TV crimes and Fulci on the, uh, the B-side. This is such a good fucking, like, split. Well, not split. Well, I guess collaboration on the B-side. But, you know, it, it's such a good release. And, like, I don't have Tropical Sun. So I kind of wish I would have, like, at least grabbed a copy of Tropical Sun. But I think you needed to, like, grab the actual box set. I'm not sure. And I kind of regret not looking into it. Hey, it might not even be sold out yet. But. It all depends on the patrons this month, because there's some gnarly releases that, you know, I would love to grab for the channel. But real quickly, again, documentaries of Necrophagia. Let me show you the actual cassette, because 
This should be like a $15 tape, but Gurgling Gore hooks you up. For one, the, like these tape shells are no joke. Expensive as fuck. And I love how they like, it's kind of like 3D. Like, it's sick. And side cyst gurgle and side putrid stew. These are available on two different tape shells. The clear one is oh my god, it's so gross and awesome looking. But trust me, this is an A plus in gore grind slash mints, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's just disgusting and devastating especially the putrid stew side of things like i said probably some of my favorite putrid stew material documentaries of necrophagia cyst gurgle and putrid stew on gurgling gore fucking a get that shit as always thanks for watching you fucking rule thanks again to gurgling gore for supporting this channel hails mm -hmm.